Hi friend, why I'm not using Flutter is one of the most asked questions, so let's answer it at once. What is better, React Native or Flutter? Actually, you should kind of uh, decide and understand why why do you really need and do you really need cross-platform app? At the work, I'm wearing two hats. I am freelancing, I'm I'm working as consultant for other companies and I'm building my own apps. And for both of them, I'm choosing kind of do not use Flutter. And there are I don't know, five reasons maybe why. Let me show you to you one tweet. Check out this tweet from Notion. So Notion how I use an Android app and they rewrite it, basically updated uh, it to using native parts. And basically they see two times speed improvement for iOS, three times speed improvement for Android. Basically they redesigned it using native components. Native apps are just faster. That is kind of nice. My second point is native apps looks better. And uh, yeah, I built one test project using Flutter application. I post it on my YouTube in short, and I got a lot of uh, kind of positive feedback on that video because yeah, that interface looks nice. I just followed one tutorial, but still you can make much nicer kind of interfaces using native tools one more kind of con you are on the mercy of third-party services as soon as apple and android release new features new sdks or new hardware with new sensors you are not able to use them until your chosen provider will implement that if you are kind of starting to build application you have to take a look on list of all the functionality what you like to have and compare with your library is it does it support it or not basically cross-platform development that always is compromised because if you like the best experience the best possible look for the app the fastest kind of possible app then you go native and why companies are doing that so for example if you're in company you have uh, javascript developers and you need to build mobile app then probably react native path is not so bad because in-house developers are already familiar with uh, the product or business problem what company is solving if you will bring in a new team new ios team new uh, android team firstly you need to hire those developers it is not so easy to find experienced developers nowadays secondly you kind of have to manage them <laughs> and yeah maybe Maybe you, as company, you would like to choose the problem of dependency management library, uh, all that problem better than human problem. So that's compromise for sure, but you can save on development resources and maybe time. And yeah, of course, there could be in the market some tiny startups where developers do Android and iOS application and maybe some web development and maybe even manage some servers. <laughs> I personally don't like to work on for startup like that. Yeah, if you are founder of that startup, that totally different story if you are building that project for yourself. But if you are working for a company like that, uh, no, thank you. I better would like to work for a company which can afford separate iOS and Android development teams. For personal apps also, you kind of have to understand why do you really need and do you really need that cross-platform kind of development, cross-platform application. I'm often asked it here on Twitch streams, basically, but why are you leaving money on table? Android phones are more popular and yada yada, all those arguments. So I don't have any Android app in the store now, but I was working with customers which had Android and iOS app. And usually iOS apps bringing most of the money. iOS users are kind of more willing to pay for apps. That's a fact. And if you are building, of course, if you are building a business on running apps, ads, ads in your apps or collecting user data, basically, if you are Facebook, yeah, sure, you need Android and iOS app. If you are not, if you are kind of building business on selling your product, selling your apps, maybe iOS market is enough and you don't have all that headache of supporting android and yeah it's kind of feels that yeah you can use flutter and then you get android up for free windows up for free macos for free even web up I, I hear you yeah you kind of get it for free but that is not true you have to support and maintain all those platforms and i have i don't know zero willing to support app on linux on and so on i'm using uh, ios devices i'm living in apple ecosystem and i know how good uh, apple apps for Apple ecosystem should look. I don't even know how good Android apps should look. I used Android, but many years ago. So you can't just copy paste design from iOS to Android. You need to make it unique because different platforms have different design 
UX and UI paradigms, so they are working differently. If your goal is kind of to work as a freelancer and you are looking forward to work on those online job platforms like Upwork, Freelancer, whatever, Fiverr, and you are looking to do projects for small companies which are looking to create quick small MVP to test business idea and they need iOS and Android app, then I will choose Flutter as cross-platform development tool and I will go with that. Because yeah, for those projects, you are basically doing that project, (laughs) dropping it, getting money and uh, moving away, moving to the next one. For that type of project, Flutter will be kind of good choice and you know that project will live for a year, maybe, maybe less, maybe more, but after that, anyways, it will die or it will be rewritten into the native kind of solution. And it will die, I think, by because of business reasons. I have a potential one cross-platform kind of development project in mind. Maybe I will make uh, an app and then I will do some YouTube videos about that and so on and so on. My opinion as web developer about React Native is used for some time to bootstrap an app if app gets traction switch to native by learning and rewriting app. Exactly. I agree with you. Yeah. And definitely, yeah, if it is your first coding language, definitely go native. Do not start by learning Flutter. It's not a great idea. Yeah. Uh, totally, yeah. The reason why React Native was developed was to solve the cost and management of two native apps for startups. If you care about absolute best experience from start, have enough cost and the resources go with native. Yes, code for real. You are totally right. Of course, probably there are plenty of uh, positive experiences, but Airbnb, it was 2018. Maybe a lot of things are changed, but basically they tried to use React Native and they found that for them it is cheaper and better to support native development and all of that stuff. Yeah, And they basically sunsetting React Native. And that was kind of interesting success story on the beginning, if you follow it, that and not so successful at the end. I don't know current set eight, but of course there are plenty of companies with different experiences and so on. I'm, I'm just saying that it is not kind of clear answer here. It depends. <laughs> As Golden Dogo software said, it depends. Can be worse than hammering. Yeah, almost anything can be worse than hammering, right? <laughs> yes, uh, Kowalski, you're right. There is that key MM uh, multi-platform approach when you use Kotlin for business logic, but you still use kind of, still, but you're still developing a native user interface using Swift UI and Kotlin for user interface for each platform, but my kind of core business logic is Kotlin. That's not really cross-platform as most of those who speak about cross-platform understand because you still use still develop kind of split user interfaces. 